What's going on guys? Today we have selected an epic scene from the amazing movie Back to the Future. Now, this is part of one of the most successful franchises in universal history, a worldwide cultural phenomenon, and the highest grossing film of 1985. And with this lesson, you are going to learn some useful expressions, pronunciation, American pop culture, and even interesting scientific vocabulary. But before we watch, I want to let you know that if you're new here, every week we help you to understand your favorite movies, series, and more so that you can understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Like Dunya, who says that our lessons help her to understand and even speak like a native. Do you want to be able to do that too? Well, what are you waiting for? Just click the subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. Go, Johnny, go, go. Go, Johnny, go, go, go. Doc! Marty! <laughs> you made it! Yeah! Welcome to my latest experiment. This is a big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. Ah, uh, well, it's a DeLorean, right? Stay with what me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. Roll yeah. tape. Okay, and I'll we'll proceed. Ah, uh, Doc. Uh, is that a Devo? Never mind that now. Never mind that now. Not now. Not now. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26, 1985, 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, honey. Hey, hey, boy. Get in there. Yeah, no, boy. In here you go. Sit down. Put your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, check done. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch ahead. Get that thing hooked up to the car. Watch this. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yeah. As you can see here, this phrase is commonly used to say that a person arrived. Hey. Hi. Wait, wait. You're um, you're a potato. Well, I'm a spud. And the antenna. Oh my God! You're Sputnik. Yes. <laughs> Marry her. However, another common meaning is to say that someone succeeded at something. Example: I hear you made it a whole week without smoking. Welcome to my latest experiment. This is a big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. The word experiment is used to refer to a scientific test or investigation. By saying that this is his latest one, Dr. Brown means that this is the newest one. He also refers to this experiment as the big one. Do you know what that means? Welcome to my latest experiment. This is a big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. Uh, well, it's a DeLorean. This car is a DeLorean DMC-12. It is a car manufactured in the 80s by DeLorean Motor Company. It goes without saying that after the release of the Back to the Future trilogy, this car became iconic. Uh, well, it's a DeLorean, right? Bear with me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. The phrase, bear with me, is a polite way of asking someone to be patient. Example, if you just bear with me for a few more minutes, we'll have all the paperwork finished. Roll yeah. tape. Okay, I will proceed. Uh, Doc, uh, is that a Devo? Never mind that now. Never mind that now. Right now. The phrase, roll tape, is used to ask someone to start recording on videotape. However, even if the recording device is completely electronic, with no rolling parts as before, the word roll is still current. For example, you've probably heard me say at the beginning of some of our lessons, let's roll the scene. To proceed means to go or continue forward. Example, we'll proceed towards London. Dr. Brown is saying that once Marty starts filming, they'll continue. Roll yeah. tape. Okay, I will proceed. Uh, Doc, uh, is that a Devo? Never mind that now. Never mind that now. Right now. Devo is an American rock band that used to wear these suits to perform. 
However, Dr. Brown is not actually wearing a Devo suit, but a radiation suit, as you can see by the symbol on his back. Alright, now I have a grammar question for you. Can you remember what Doc said next? Alright, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing in the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. We use the preposition on to talk about wide areas or surfaces. The book is on the table. I'm laying on the beach. Now English learners confuse these prepositions all the time. Do you want to use them correctly? Then after this lesson, check out this video where we explain to you exactly how each of these three prepositions functions so you'll never confuse them again. It's Saturday morning, October 26, 1985, 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Temporal is a word used to refer to things related to time. So by saying this, Dr. Brown denotes that his experiment is time related. Come on, honey. Hey, hey, boy, get in there. Yeah, no, boy. In here you go. Right, sit down. Put your seatbelt on. That's it. This is said to praise someone for doing something correctly. Sometimes you will even see it reduced to add a boy or add a girl. <laughs> hey, you know what? Leave the hat. Alan, leave that. boy. You're right, I'm sorry. I don't... Okay. I don't know what I was thinking. All right. It's okay. Atta girl! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. When two or more things are synchronized, they occur at the same time. For example, you might have seen synchronized swimming on TV, or you could say that you have two watches synchronized. That is, that they show exactly at the same time. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it. Did you notice how Marty connects the word got and it as if they were just one word? Listen to it again. Got it. Got it. In this phrase, we can hear an American T, which makes the T morph into a soft D. This happens when you have a T sound between two vowel sounds, even if they are in separate words, as it happens here. So instead of saying, got it, Marty says, got it. For example, you would hear it with instances such as butter, chatter, goda. Check out this other example of sound morphing of American T's. Dance. Hey man, look at Marvin's hand. He can't play with his hand like that, and we can't play without him. Yeah, well look, Marvin. Marvin, you gotta play. Hey, hey boy, get in there. Get out, boy. In here you go. Sit down. In your hands, if you believe in progress, re-elect Mayor Red Thomas. Progress is his middle name. Mayor Red Thomas's progress platform means more jobs, better education, bigger civic improvements, and lower taxes. Hey, real quick, do you want to master native pronunciation, vocabulary, and even grammar? Well, the most fun way to do it is with our Fluent with Friends course. And today, you can try it for free with our three-part masterclass. So I wanna give you three reasons why you should try out this three-part masterclass. The first one is vocabulary. You will learn tons of vocabulary, and not just vocabulary that you never use and you forget, but the vocabulary that natives really use every single day. And we'll also show you how to never forget it. The second reason is because of pronunciation. You will learn the way that natives really speak, not at all like how you learned in school. And the third reason is because you will learn the cultural context so that you will be able to understand and laugh along with every single joke. And in addition to all of this, if you join our full Fluent with Friends course, you will never be alone in your learning because you get to join our global community of English learners, the Fluency Circle. So what are you waiting for? You can try that all for free with our three-part masterclass by clicking up here or down in the description below. Right, check done. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch ahead. Get that thing hooked up to the car. Here, the phrasal verb hook up is used as a way of saying connected. Marty just realized that Emma can control the DeLorean through a remote control. Let's see some other examples of this word. 
Where have you been all week? Working. Where's Einstein? Is he with you? Yeah, he's right here. You know, Doc, you left your equipment on all week. My equipment? That reminds me, Marty. You better not hook up to the amplifier. There's a slight possibility of overload. You forgot one small detail. We forgot to hook up the doll. You forgot to hook up the doll. <laughs> what did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! <laughs> the thermal displacement occurred exactly 120 a.m. at zero seconds! Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc, you disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty, I didn't disintegrate anything. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Then where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact, and precisely. 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him at the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? This is a unit of measure of speed used in the UK and the United States and is represented by the abbreviation MPH. The thermal displacement occurred exactly 120 a.m. at zero seconds! A temporal displacement is a temporary phenomenon in which a certain element from one time period was misplaced into another time period. As you can see in many movies that involve time traveling, when a temporal displacement is not corrected, it can have devastating effects on the timeline. Let's see an example of this from The Simpsons. I've gone back to the time when dinosaurs weren't just confined to zoos. Okay, don't panic. Remember the advice your father gave you on your wedding day. If you ever travel back in time, don't step on anything, because even the tiniest change can alter the future in ways you can't imagine. Fine. As long as I stand perfectly still and don't touch anything, I won't destroy the future. Stupid bug! You go squish now! <gasps> but that was just one little insignificant mosquito. That can't change the future, right? Right? Mm. I'm back! Oh, my loving family. Nothing's changed. Idly ho, slaverinos. Ah, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc, you disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty, I didn't disintegrate anything. When something disintegrates, it breaks into its constituent elements, parts, or small particles. I'm gonna disintegrate you! Claim disintegration by the cure. As the car disappeared with Einstein, the dog, inside, Marty is accusing the doc of having disintegrated him. By the way, did you notice how this word is said? Jesus Christ, Doc, you disintegrated Einstein! You disintegrated Einstein! So it's not disintegrate, it's disintegrate. It reduces from four to just three syllables, and the first T sound disappears. Now, if you enjoy Back to the Future, then you will probably laugh a lot with the popular animated series Rick and Morty, which is loosely based on the characters from this movie. A great place to get you started with that is to watch the lesson that we recently made with it, which you can find after you finish this video by clicking up here or down in the description below. The molecular structure of both Einstein and the car are completely intact. 
The adjective molecular comes up most often in biology and chemistry, and it always describes one of the smallest units that form every organism, molecules. By saying that the molecular structure of Einstein and the car are intact, Dr. Brown means that they have not been altered, so there's nothing to worry about. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? This phrase is commonly used to emphasize anger or surprise. Do you know how else you can hear it? To, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! 1.21 gigawatts! Great Scott! What? What the hell is a gigawatt? Do you, do you know where Riverside Drive is? It's uh, in the other end of town, a block past Maple, east end of town. You know, block past Maple, that's, uh, that's John F. Kennedy Drive. Who the hell is John F. Kennedy? <laughs> where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? In cases like this one, the word appropriate is used as a synonym of correct. Emmett is correcting Marty by saying that he should be asking when instead of where, because he sent Einstein and the car to a different time. By the way, when the hell is not a common use of that expression. You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. As you can probably imagine, a time traveler is someone who travels through time, like Doctor Who or Terminator. One minute into the future to be exact, and precisely 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him at the time machine. In this context, to catch up means to reach the point where one should be after a delay. In other words, as the doc sent them one minute to the future, they'll meet at exactly that time. Let's listen again to the way that he says this sentence. One minute into the future to be exact, and precisely 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him at the time machine. Here we have another good example of connected speech. Up is a preposition, which is an example of a function word. These words reduce and connect to content words, like catch. So, instead of saying catch up, Emmett Brown says, We shall catch up, catch up. Natives do this all the time. Let's look at some more examples. You were standing on your toilet and you were hanging a clock and you fell and you hit your head on the sink. And that's when he came up with the idea for the flux capacitor, which is what makes time travel possible. Whoa, this is it. This is the part coming up, Doc. All right, now, watch this. You wind up the car and release it. I'll simulate the lightning. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? As you can see here, out of can be used to show what something is made from. Example. Her dress was made out of velvet. Here we have another good connected speech example. Let's hear this phrase again and try to identify it. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Did you notice how Marty pronounced the words out and of? Out of a DeLorean? Out of a DeLorean? As previously mentioned, when we have the T sound between two vowel sounds, the T becomes a soft D. Out of a DeLorean? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Style is a word used to refer to something or someone fashionable. Example, his clothes are always in style. So Doc is asking a rhetorical question here by saying that he not only built a time travel machine, but he also made it stylish.
<laughs> you made it. Yeah. Welcome to my latest experiment. This is a big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. Ah, uh, well, it's a DeLorean, right? Stay with what me, Marty. All your questions will be answered. Roll yeah. tape. Okay, I'll right. proceed. Ah, uh, done. All right, is that a Devo? Never mind that now. Never mind that now. Not now. Not now. All right, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26, 1985, 1.18 a.m. And this is temporal experiment number one. Come on, Heidi. Hey, hey, boy, get in there. Yeah, no, boy. In here you go. Sit down. Put your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa. whoa. OK. Please note that Einstein's clock is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it. Right, check then. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch ahead. Get that thing hooked up to the car. Watch this. Calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Structure both Einstein and the car are completely intact. Where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I step him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And precisely, 1.21 a.m. in zero seconds, we shall catch up with him at the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? 